Hello, YouTube VOD watchers. Welcome back to the island. I appreciate so much that you've taken the time to go through this playthrough. I hope that you've enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed bringing it to you. As always, if you haven't yet taken the time to subscribe to the channel, please do that. If you are a member of the channel, if you've hit the join button, thank you for doing that. Please leave a comment if there's anything that you want to talk about that you saw in the playthrough. I do love reading those comments. And put a like up. Thumbs up. Makes a big difference so more people can discover this. One of the best ways you can support this channel, if you've ever wondered, it's totally free to do, is to share my stuff. Uh, tell people about what I do. Share my stuff. It makes a huge difference. If you bring people into this stream, more people get to benefit from it. And that's pretty awesome. If you want to catch me live, I'm over on Twitch at 9.30 p.m. Pacific time. Alrighty, let's learn more about Bob. Throw the overlay up. Let's rock. This time we gotta go toward the yellow flowers, but where did the door go? I'll just go get one more seed, okay? Any way I could stop you? So, Bob... Okay, so Bob's mom is Never one issue. Bob's nephew is Truman Zanotto, and Truman Zanotto, I think, kicked him out of work for drinking. That's my hypothesis. I don't know for sure if that's what happened yet, but... We got a bag tag over here. this what what are you doing here hey lily i thought you hadn't seen your great uncle bob in years how does he know what you look like my dad sent him pictures for years he's never heard your voice though has he how'd you know <laughs> that's really interesting so he so bob potentially sees himself as very separate from her because she's on her own island, and he can't remember her voice. I love that. Because remember, when we see people in these, we're not seeing people as they are. We're seeing Bob's projection of them. We're seeing the, the internalized object, so to speak. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't realize how interconnected all that was. I enjoy those clever little bits, too. I, I think that's a really nice touch that they are very cognizant of what they're creating here psychologically. I think I hear some emotional back. <laughs> I wonder if the emotional baggage is related to Lily. Also, can we just talk about how awesome it is that as you go, Towards a certain part here, it becomes like dusk and dawn because you're moving around the globe. That's an absolutely fantastic touch as well that I really appreciate. Damn it. What would the inside of your brain look like? I don't know. Gray matter. A lot of gray matter. Probably a golf course mixed with a hockey rink. <laughs> right now, it's definitely a sheet of ice. I want to dock here. I need all the things. Also, is this Truman? Oh, shit. Hi, Agent Zanotto. You're fired. You can't fire me. You're fired. Is that all you're going to say to me, Truman? You think I won't fire family? This isn't Truman, remember. Okay, see you later, Bob's memory of Truman. Firing people makes me feel like a big man. 
<laughs> All right, that's Bob's judgment. That's Bob's judgment toward Truman right there. Firing people makes me feel like a big man. And he says it very sarcastically. That's not Truman saying that. That's Bob making meaning out of what Truman did. So Bob seems to be deferring some of his own accountability to making it like a character flaw in Truman. Which is fascinating. Like, oh, this guy just does this because he's on a power trip. Is the we get to see the judgments. We get to see the meaning that Bob makes out of his relationships through how he holds them in his mind. It's a very powerful thing. And it would be cool to be able to like see that in people's minds. We hear it in how they talk about people and what they notice about people. But something that's very important to remember about interjects the official term but like basically the way we internalize folks is that it's oversimplified we cannot internalize the entire complexity of who another human being is they are fragments and people in real life will never they will always be no, more nuanced than our internalized object of them is and if we start to hold people against our internalized object of them instead of using our real live interactions in order to diversify the internal representation we have of them that's going to cause a lot of problems for interactions because we're holding them to a very simplistic standard and we're likely to be disappointed. All right, so Bob's like, you know, saying Truman's this, you know, big man. Okay, see you later, Bob's memory of Truman. Firing people makes me feel like a big man. I think I hear something. I need the steamer trunk tag for this guy. Yeah. Yep, exactly, Scott. That's exactly right, right? Especially if you have grudges, you end up holding the grudge more against the image you have of the person than the person themselves. Yes. Damn it. I think I hear some emotional baggage nearby. Ow! I know those flowers are going to do that. Yet I continue to jump right by them. There we go. Yep. <coughs> What's that sound? Oh shit, there's another. Ah, uh, it's fine. Steal it. Alrighty, we got another bottle. What will be in this one? One wonders. Hey, alright, I guess we are going back. Here's the steamer trunk tag. wonder if Dr. Mick will go back and end up platinuming this game after he's finished. Probably not. Maybe when I was younger, I would have. And I had the stamina for that kind of thing and cared about 100%ing games. But I don't know that I foresee myself doing that for this. God! I wonder how many times Dr. Mick's going to hit that flower. sail around just a little bit. Further over toward 
nighttime side. Pick up some of these things that we might have missed. Maybe. Oh, there's a Kraken in here. How did you decide to become a streamer? Oh, I just wanted to have a bigger impact on the world instead of being in my little echo chamber that is academia. And I thought streaming would be a good way to do it. Combines the things I love, gives me more of a chance to help people in a meaningful way. And so here I am. Uh, Soundbite, thanks for popping in and saying that. I appreciate that, friend. And what do you think about L.A. Noir? I played it for a little bit. It's okay. Oh, no. No, I missed one. Wow, this is, uh... Oh God. I don't even know, Skog. I don't even know how to answer that. It's not even hey close. Now, just hang on there. What? What's wrong? I wasn't doing anything. You weren't about to grab that seed. <laughs> grab that what? Mm. Oh my God. I didn't even see that. Let me grab that. No, wait. Raz. Thanks for the tip. Raz. One more time around the block, Jeeves. Yep. Oh. Oh. All right, I gotta figure out how to get up there. Seems like I gotta take that straw. Right, Skog? <laughs> like, yeah, 3.2 million on one TikTok is... Come on! Oh! There's gotta be a way to do this. Yes! Killiam, thank you for popping out alert to say that. I appreciate that, friend. And yes, I have, Angel. I have seen that. Oh, why didn't I stock up on Cypops? All right, Tia's greenhouse. All right. Brownie faces, a lot of sad. That bearded guy is a picture with her in every photo. I wonder if that's Bob. Oh no. He 
These are Bob's memories, though. Who is this? Is that Bob when he's young? Okay, maybe that's Bob when he's young, so mom would go outside. Oh, mom was, okay, so mom was the alcoholic. So Bob turned to alcohol as well. Another way to subconsciously get close to mom. Oh, man. Yeah, all right, so she was absentee because of alcohol for Bob. Brutal, man. He never went out there, apparently, until he buried her. You could come. I love a good wedding, don't you? Now then, to the champagne tower, my good man. Oh no. Hi, have you met my friend? Oh, his they aunt. Just love to fly and fly. Although he called her mom. I don't know. I mean, so, okay, so maybe Bob was adopted by his aunt. Maybe her name was Tia. Put me down. I mean, I know Tia is Spanish for for aunt, but so I'll say this regardless, regardless of whatever, she was obviously an important part of Bob's life, and she was some kind of caregiver. And I'm I'm going to use this as a chance to talk a little bit about how alcohol can affect a parenting relationship in a child. I know we talked about this a little bit last time, but alcoholism is a relationship. That's how we think about it. Person has a relationship to alcohol. And that relationship, unfortunately, can become one of the strongest relationships, if not the strongest relationship that a person has. Alcohol is reliable. It is consistent, especially when it's available. The effect that it has on a person is often consistent. Humans are less consistent than alcohol. And I'm sure there are probably, there's probably a person or two that's listening to me say this that's like, yep, I know what you're talking about. Well, unfortunately, when a person, in this case, Bob's guardian, turns to alcohol as a consistent way to cope with whatever's going on in her life, it then creates an absence for the child. Now, what a child learns in that moment, you have to understand developmentally. A child is not going to look at that in the complex frame of what alcoholism is because they don't have any conceptualization of what that is. What a child is going to see and internalize is alcohol is more important than me. Or even more simply, I'm not important. And a child who longs for the caregiving of their guardian, which is what they should be doing, it makes sense, it's developmentally appropriate, is seeing that a person is inconsistent and unreliable because of their relationship to alcohol. And subsequently, oftentimes later in life, a person like that will find either a intense aversion to alcohol or may turn to it, both because they can empathize with that experience and because they realize, well, if alcohol was a constant for that person, maybe it can also be a constant for me. And the role that alcohol plays in a person's life, whether it helps them get closer to their emotional experience or farther away from it, is something that a lot of people will rely on rather than developing the skills on their own, and it's a very powerful thing. And the effect that has on a child is very profound. It makes a child question their worth in a way that they shouldn't have to and in a way that they don't understand the nuance of in the way an adult can. Very sad. Hello down there. Up in the air, junior man. You know, even Bob in these moments, like, as the turn up sounds like he might be under the influence of alcohol. Oh, 
really love to make this. Have an air sickness bag. Red, go away. Breath from above. <laughs> right, me too, Skag. I don't like him. I want him to go away. Especially with these stupid splody flowers and thorns everywhere. What up, moth? Hey, don't get so close. Wait, no, I want that. Wait a minute. Hey, we're in cake. Whoa. I don't know about this place. Oh boy. Woo. All right, H and B. So I wonder if B is Bob. So we might be at Bob's wedding here. I wonder if his mom ruined his wedding or didn't show up because of alcohol. That would be very sad if that happens. Dad spent my entire childhood making sure I wouldn't smoke nicotine. It was the biggest life regret. And I now have similar feelings to someone having a drink. Having a drunk dad all the time. I have a huge aversion to any type of smoking. It totally makes sense. Parents are often presented with the opportunity to replay or redo. Or repeat or redo, I mean. What their own parents did. And a lot of parents... That's how. That's what influences their parenting is, what they saw their own parents do and what they appreciated versus did not appreciate, and they also will use their own life, for sure. Almost had it. No. I just see if we can get to the heart of this bad now. Why can't I use clairvoyance on it? There we go. Wow, remind me not to invite you to my wedding. <laughs> all right, so these are all the people. These are all the people that must have been at Bob's wedding. So we've got Truman here, we've got Helmet here. Everybody sitting at the head table. Who's chilling over here? We got Compton here. We got Cassie. Nice. What's that sound? We got Teddy Bear. We got the DJ. He looks like a cool dude. I can make that. Go. Oh! 
the other one. I'm not sure what his wife's name is, Angel. Got all Bob's baggage. Now, where do we go? Oh, we gotta get up there somehow. What do you think pairing the tags with the baggage represent? I'm not sure. Probably just kind of like working through, opening up the emotional baggage, uh, being aware of it. Right? Like it's important, I think, to open up to our emotions rather than keep them locked away. So it's probably a metaphor for accessing them. Look, I've already given Bob two of those seeds. They're harmless. You what? Uh -oh. You have no idea the harm you've done, do you? Time to get serious. Uh oh. I'm gonna have to fight the moth. I'm running out of places to hide this thing. Ooh, How about on Helmet's good? nipple? Nobody actually eats wedding cake, right? Uh, I don't, because well, I don't like cake. I like wedding cake. Oh, what's up, Bob? Down here, kid. Get me out of here. I don't want to miss the ceremony. Onions on the cake? That doesn't make a lot of sense, but okay. All right, Bobby. I appreciate you offering to carry me down the aisle. My uh, regular carrier broke a wing when we crashed into the Champagne Tower. I'm fine though. Didn't feel a thing. Takes a lot to crack this you old noggin. What? I don't think I'm ready to go in quite yet. Why don't you just set me down over there, okay? Your thing, Bob. Oh, yeah, that's good. Uh, I'm feeling a little off. And I don't want to ruin the ceremony. <laughs> There's a couple things. One, I wonder if Bob's internalization of himself as a like a bulb, essentially like a turnip, is that he's like relatively worthless and heavy, that he's not really capable of doing anything on his own. He needs to be carried by others. Like I think we're we are seeing a lot of Bob's self-esteem show up in here. He's funny. He makes light of the fact that he gets moved around by others 
But you could see it in this, like he's getting nervous about this being a moment for him because the spotlight's on him, which is probably something that Bob is not used to. If this is his wedding, he was neglected by his caregiver as a result of alcohol. At least that's what we can guess based on what we've seen. So now Bob having the spotlight on him instead of being in a supporting role is probably very overwhelming to him. And this worry that he's going to screw something up, I mean, it's hard to know exactly where that comes from, but that's something that Bob learned, is that his presence is something that screws things up, that his presence is burdensome. If I was going to make a guess, my guess is that that's where we're talking about that simplistic childhood representation or that childhood meaning that he made out of his guardian's relationship to alcohol, which is that all I do is get in the way. I'm a responsibility that my mom has that keeps her from her happy place in her greenhouse. Thus, I am burdensome. I am a problem for my mom. My mom would rather be doing X, and instead she has to deal with me. And I can tell that I'm burdensome because she doesn't spend any extra time with me. As soon as she's done eating dinner or whatever, she's out. She's back in the greenhouse doing what's more important to her. And she's keeping it from me, which tells me maybe she doesn't even trust me with what it is, which makes, it, makes me think even more that I'm not worth her time. So Bob then carries into adulthood an internalized sense of worthlessness because he learned that from a formative relationship. And then Bob projects that into his adult relationships. He assumes that other people think that he's as burdensome, perhaps as he perceived his mom thinking that he was burdensome to her. And as we know, that's not true, but it's very easy for our brain to draw that conclusion because it's adaptive. And it also helps explain the uncertainty of adult relationships. And it's what makes it very sad because if Bob's not cognizant of that process happening, he's going to act on it without realizing it, and it's going to perpetuate itself. And it's really a bummer. This is why it is so important for parents to be attentive to their children. You're, you're raising what will one day be an adult that carries what you've instilled within them in a very simplistic way. Yeah, absolutely, Angel, right? Like having the H in front of the B, maybe. Maybe it's a really nice feminist move, put the woman first. Or, I mean, if it's a heterosexual relationship, I don't know that it is. Um, but yeah, it could be that Bob sees himself as secondary. Also, I don't know that we need Helmet's nipples just in our face like that. How do you draw that conclusion of being a burden by existing? You have to replace that narrative. And that starts with you. Nobody else is going to author that narrative for you in adulthood. It's it's a sad thing, but like, just because you think that doesn't mean it's actually true. There are probably plenty of people who will not think you're a burden at all and may actually enjoy your existence. But you got to stop yourself from projecting that into other relationships because if you assume other people think of you the same way you do, you're in a, for a world of hurt. That's going to be a self-perpetuating problem. So you gotta, you have to reauthor the narrative yourself and talking to a therapist about that kind of thing can be very helpful because we know how to help people navigate that. I, Robert Zanotto, take this okay, so Bob and Helmet, there we go. It's not a heterosexual relationship. Helmet is H, it's for Helmet. So Bob and Helmet got married, cool. tried to pull them out but this mighty oak has given me shade shelter and something to lean on when I needed it just when I thought I was turning to seed you made me bloom again I do now it makes sense why helmet is so large 
Bob's vision. Wow. Good to see you again, Helmet. I'll make sure this gets back to Bob. Now. What's interesting in this, if we connect it to what I was just talking about, is... Bob's sense of burdensomeness is not likely to go away just because he's marrying Helmet. So we get to hear about how much of a big deal Helmet is to Bob. But you'll notice that in this memory as we walk up, we didn't hear what Helmet said about what Bob means to him. And I don't think that's an accident. I think it probably would be very hard for Bob to hear that. So much so that he didn't even remember it or it wasn't something he placed in this memory. Because I must also be a burden to Helmet. I'm somebody that Helmet has to take care of. I'm somebody that he has to nurture. Thus, I don't have anything to offer because that's a developmentally one down position. And the hope would be that Bob could get to a point where he could hear what Helmet has to say. Because Helmet has decided that Bob does mean something to him. That Bob does have something to offer. And if Bob's not careful and hasn't done the work, he's going to block it out. Which could potentially destroy the emotional connective tissue of their relationship. Because then Helmet has to constantly convince Bob that he matters. And that is inherently going to be burdensome, which then leaves Bob saying, I told you so. All right, Bob is a seed. Helmet is a full-grown bush. Which maybe represents the, you know, the difference, the difference in development. Well, Bob, you did it. Yep, I did it. Why so nervous? I'm just... I'm starting to remember uh, why I got rid of those seeds. Through Healthia Monstrosia. I warned you, and I warned you, but did you listen? No! Let's tackle your demons, Don't Bob. Worry, I'm here to protect you. Again. doing to him leave him alone i'm protecting him protecting him from what you're about to find out oh, no bob's got to go in his cocoon holy shit oh my god okay Shit. Oh, 
Ooh, we gotta throw bottles back at mom. Ooh, brutal. Alright, alright, so Zenato is fiery. It would seem. I like this. You oversimplify. Oh, God! Got to be something that's more useful potentially. Hey, that hurts. Oh, could you? You make it so hard for me to do my job. Son of a. Job, Raz. Hold on, Agent Zanato. I'll get you out of there. Come on, Bob. I knew those seeds were bad news. Oh, now you've gone and put him into a bad mood again. Ah, we got this, brother. Is it uh, too late to put those seeds back? Everything was so nice here before you Then somebody hey, get that off! <laughs> if you really care about him, you'll stop doing that. I'm ready to go now. I need but to know what's causing that move before I can get rid of it. You make it so hard for me to do my job. Sounds good idea. Everything was so nice here. Uh... God damn it. That was painful. Hey, knock that off. Anyway, if I could just CV this thing, I could find out what's causing it. Okay. Let's see what's causing this bad mood. supposed to hurt this much. It doesn't need to hurt at all. Doesn't need to hurt you, I mean. <laughs> yeah, see that moth? It's a protector, but it's causing problems. God. Man, this is chaos. Oh shit. Get out, Rez. Oh, 
This is what you get for leaving me to die. This is what you get for leaving me to die. Bob had in Helmet's death. Because we found Helmet through his brain, but we now know that Helmet's alive. You didn't go back for me, but I'll get back at you. You didn't go back for me. Now, okay, so remember. These are Bob's projections. These aren't the actual people. It's very easy to get lost in the idea that these are the actual people, that that's Helmet. This is Bob blaming himself for not going back for Helmet and projecting that in. This is this is Bob's assumption that that's what Helmet's meaning was out of this. That's not actually necessarily what Helmet said or did or thinks. Okay, so we're seeing what Bob assumes these giant figures believe about it. Not necessarily what they actually believe about him. Very, very important thing to keep in mind while we're doing this and while we're hearing what these, you know, what they have to say, essentially. You left me to die. Looks like another dead soul. Oh, could you? Why don't you get lost, kid? How can you do this to Bob? You love him. Love? <laughs> I don't really love him. If I did, how could I have left him all alone? Helmet? Helmet would never say that. Yeah! Bob! Let's go! <sighs> I know I really want to know who the moth is. Hey! I'll keep you safe. You won't feel this at all. You won't feel this at all. Jeez. I've been hit with bigger tomatoes than that. That hurts. Tell me if this one's too hot. Moth be alcoholism. It very well could be. Like, the moth is some kind of coping strategy. So, if the moth is alcohol, I mean, that could make sense for sure. Oh, you know what? I just realized I could pick these up and throw these. Cats! Used to slow playing it from Elden Ring is right. Jeez. Come on, Bob. Yeah. Hmm. You're not 
not so bad at gardening yourself. Think you can handle them now? Willing to give it a try. How about those? Well, I'll just take them one at a time. There you go, Bob. Bob's your uncle. Nice. Yep, all the bottles in the blue bin. Bottle caps, too. Hey, that too. We're recycling plastic now. Can you believe it? So, uh, Agent Sonato, think you could help me with a little yard work? Wow, what a mess. Yeah. I mean, it's impressive as far as strength and mass, but in terms of aesthetics, it's all over the place. You talking about the vines or that beard? Who's this? Helmet. So this is where you ran off to. Figures. What? It's me, Bobby. It's your psyching. But how? Where's your body? I was lost for a long time until this one found me. Body's on loan from the mailroom. Hang on. Borrowed lips. Wouldn't be right. True. Yeah. <laughs> and he's not as cute as you either. <laughs> Come on. Let's at least wash that. What does that smell? Mushrooms? You know I hate mushrooms. Oh, man. I love that so much. Yeah, let's not use Nick's parts for that. <laughs> Repair, who knows what you'll find inside Nona's mind. Be sure you're ready before activating the astrolathe. Oh my goodness. That was really lovely. Really, really lovely. Oh, your archetype can take twice as much damage. Take no damage for a brief period when entering clairvoyance. Pyrokinesis damage duration is increased. Increases cool times between time bubbles. Get an extra attack with your melee combo. Powers are no longer restricted by cooldowns. That seems huge. Rank 102. I don't even know what rank I am. Oh, rank 52? Oh, jeez. That's a long way off. Holy crap. Anxiety is our fight or flight response. Something that is supposed to keep us safe normally, but when it is going off way too much, it can become a problem. Yes, it can. Um, anxiety is helpful. It's our response to anxiety that makes the difference. You can amplify anxiety or you can mitigate anxiety through your response to it. Whether that's the moth. I mean, I think the moth is relatively ambiguous. You know, is it a mask that Bob puts on? Is it alcohol? Is it anxiety? You know, is it some internalized object that he created as like an invisible friend because his people were unreliable to him? It's hard. You know, it's... I think it's kind of cool that the moth is left to our interpretation. Two pins for that special projection in your life. Psycho with your card so you can rank up. 
Oh man, I got a lot of these. So it's what, nine side cards? So nine into four, so I can get eight of those? Think I'm doing the math right on that? Let's combine that cycle with your card so you can rank up. Let's combine that cycle with your card so you can rank up. Oh, uh, let's see. I survived having COVID. I was in the hospital over a month. Oh my God, I'm glad you survived. Can you give me advice on how to deal with family who do not care about you and act as if you're already dead? Boundaries. Uh, without knowing more, best I can say is boundaries. Surround yourself by people who do care. Uh, you don't owe family anything, especially if they're going to treat you that way. Um, you know, determine what's best for you and go from there. I mean, I'm, I'm, that's a terrible experience to have. And at the same time, like you don't owe people anything if they're going to treat you that way. All right. Uh, let's do it. I think we're ready. I don't think there's anything else for us to do as it relates to this. So Although I am kind of curious about where I just I want to see what Bob and Helmet are doing. I want to Wait, did he bring his house down? There's two bird, three birds there. There was one bird here. Okay, so one, two. Wow, this must be the first ever psycho isolation chamber created as therapy, later used to punish kids at summer camps. Yikes. That's torture. That's not punishment. That's torture. Very important distinction. Yikes. Tell you, this game's got some unpleasant noises for things. I think with a game being as focused on psychology as it is, that they might have been a little more cognizant of how unsettling some of the noises in this game are going to be. It's locked. Oh. It's a picture of the psychic six. I mean, seven. All right. Well. I say we do the lathe or whatever it is. Do, 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 do. I'm gonna pee first though. Be right back. I'm about to get into some heavy business. Am I sure I'm ready for this? Wow, alright, so this has real point of no return moments. 
or feeling here. Maybe I should make sure I'm really prepared first. Bees and vines cleared away. We should be able to use the astrolabe to repair Nona's fractured mind. All I have to do is start up the machine and begin the operation. I should make sure I'm mentally prepared before diving in. He wants me to locate a rare fungus at the top of the far fetch falls in the questionable area. It has healing properties she might be able to use. She can't know about my mission, so I should just play along. Search for queepies, vents underground in the questionable area okay so i could go back and do these optional missions it, it's true it did give us something like that i don't know where else the story can go i'm not super worried about doing those like fetch quests those don't interest me that much so all right let's do it okay i have a feeling i'm about to get into some hit i'm ready for whatever might happen do it, Raz. Took you long enough. It still works. Of course it still works. Auto over engineers everything. Crawler, I, I think that's the nicest thing you've ever said about me. Otto, you're looking well fed. Ford, you sound like your old self. Well, some things are clear to me now that weren't before. But come on, there's a lot to be done. Is it really you? Cassie, Compton, and Bob. I'm... I'm... I'm happy to see all of you again. What's Nick from the mailroom doing? <laughs> That's actually human Fulbert's brain in Nick's body. <gasps> I do love making a grand entrance. Sounds like Full Bear. He's in there, all right. But where have you been? Uh, you don't want to know that. I've missed you so much, Big Bear. I never thought I'd see everybody together again. Well, almost everybody. Hey, I remember this place boy we used to sneak in here and fool around on the bean bags remember lucy Smother her and knock her out so that they can do this. Ready? <laughs> now, this hunk of junk was made by Otto Mentalis. So, uh, there's no telling what might happen. Oh, what can I say? I was underfunded back then. But if everything goes well, we might be able to have our dear friend Lucretia back in the circle for good. Now, you ready? I would not want Ford on the lead for this. Ford has extra investment on top of everybody else because he 
like dated her or married. I mean, no, he was in love with her. Okay, I don't want Ford on the lead. I want like Bob on the lead here, or Cassie, or somebody else who could be a little bit more objective about how we're going to handle this because we don't know what's going to happen. And Ford, by virtue of being in love with Lucretia, might push past some ideal boundaries or. You know, I just, I don't want for it on this. Just saying. Just throwing my, just throwing my two cents in the hat. I don't want for it on this. Kind of. <laughs> Me too, kid. Oh, boy. Also, can we just talk about for a second? I know that Braz didn't have the greatest relationship with his grandmother, but like, this would be very weird for Raz. I, I, I'm sort of surprised at how just okay with this that Raz is of like, I'm watching this body that for all intents and purposes was my grandmother, who I just recently found out isn't at all my grandmother. My grandmother is a skeleton in the mind of Ford. Grandma's been dead a long time. Don't know how she actually works, who she actually is in her chest. <laughs> it's just, that's not her. Uh, I mean, I guess because he's a psychonaut and he's been exposed to a lot of this stuff, maybe it doesn't hit him as hard because it kind of assimilates right in. But holy shit. That would be wild. all going in oh damn now we got to figure out what her demons are ladies and gentlemen it is my great pleasure to present to you the high flying death defiant ironically named a quarto family circus augustus We're all fleas? And little baby creepy. And the most important member of the family, one who's been here the whole time. Nona Aquato. Right where she belongs in the heart of her family. What is this? It's a mental construct made for Lucy. To convince her that she was your grandmother and that she lived with you. Oh my god! Oh, it's time to get her out of here. Holy shit! Ford! <laughs> oh my god! You! What did you step in? I don't know. It looks like a puddle of goo. With a mask of me in it. Have anyone seen my brother? He was just standing here a second ago. Ah, uh, here he is. Oh, well, come on, Raz. It's showtime. You better play along with this, Raz. We don't want to upset the construct until we have control of the situation. I'll work on Nona. Holy shit. We're about to massively rock the boat. Don't get too excited. Finally. 
That's something I don't need to worry about anymore. See the strongest boy on earth, Weepy Aquato, as he lifts weights that are frankly quite alarming. This is so messed up, man. <laughs> this is so messed up. <laughs> like, Ford made this. This is literally. Oh my god. Like, I just. <laughs> This is like the equivalent of like, imagine that your brain and your mind is this big, beautiful concert hall. It's just, it's just, it's unbelievable. Symphonies and, and, and bands and plays and just all these wonderful things happen in this gorgeous auditorium. Ford essentially redecorated the lobby into like a kindergarten playroom and then locked her out of the auditorium. And she's just sitting in the lobby thinking that the lobby is the entire building. <laughs> it's so bad. So he did it to make her think that she's Raz's grandma, essentially. He he took Raz's family. I think this is so, this is so bad on so many levels. I don't know how Raz isn't mad about this because he took Raz and he made he made her part of Raz's family. He took fleas and put masks on the fleas to make her think that she's part of Raz's family. And then had to get Raz's family to think that that's their grandmother. So not only did he mess with her, he had to have messed with the, the Aquatos. So that they think that that's their grandmother. And now we're going to break this down and we're going to essentially like open the doors to the auditorium. After it's been locked away from her for forever. This is just so bad. This is so bad. And this is why I don't want Ford on the lead. I understand that Maligula was dangerous, right? Lucretia got to a point where she became dangerous. I understand the need to try to control that and hold her accountable for that. This is like the grossest way to do that. This has got to be against everything in the book. We're gonna die. Try to find the emergency brake. Oh man. Children are safe. Good job, Rasputin. I mean, thank God this stuff isn't like actually like possible. And behold, the daring father daughter team of crazy and Augustus Aquato. One will live, one will die. Maybe. Who knows? Only one way to find God out. Round and round the wheel goes. Will Crazy kill her papa? Yeah. No one knows. You're welcome. I was about to stop it. I hope it happens again. That was fun. than a child stabbing their parent is when it happens without an audience. Don't let this sacrifice be for nothing! So, and what's really trippy about this is Ford essentially made the main flea his voice. 
because there would be enough familiarity there for her that she would trust it. One will live, one will die. Maybe. Who knows? Only one way to find out. Round and round the wheel goes. Will Crazy kill her papa? No one knows. All right, the deluge of Grulovia. All right, so there she is. Down with Czar. Help us feed the people. It started with noble intent, and then they turned on the people. No, it is the people who are wrong. She fought with the people. The military apparently did bad things. Blooded the entire town. Holy shit, of course you'd be mad. Oh my god. So she got angry. She used her psychic power. Oh man. I mean, I'm sure there was good intent initially in whatever happened to her. And I at this point, at this point, I am inclined to say that there's a chance that Maligula turned not even by her own doing. Because if she's been manipulated this hard, like in what we've seen, I, I'm not leaving it out of the realm of possibility that she got messed with. I mean, maybe she went evil, but... The only thing sadder than a child stabbing their parent is when it happens without an audience. Don't let this sacrifice be for nothing! Girl and throw knives dead. I just, I just don't feel good about it after last time. Anyone can make a mistake, Crazy. Hop on your leg! Now pick up a knife and throw it! I won't! You must believe in yourself, Crazy. No! Well, I guess I'll just sit here spinning like a windmill, then right up to the wheel wondering where the I went from. And behold, All right, we're gonna we're gonna deal with that in a second. I want to get one will die. The rest of these little Maybe. constructies. Who knows? Only one way to find out. Round and round the wheel goes. Will Crazy kill her papa? No one knows. Sadder than a child stabbing their parent is when it happens without an audience. Don't let this sacrifice be for nothing. Alrighty. But the sign says no diving. Any particular kind of therapy to get for ADHD? Once they I got diagnosed, they sort of just gave me meds and nothing else happened. Uh, just, uh, I would say like normal talk therapy with somebody who you connect really well with, who can help you with some of the behavioral management of that, cognitive management of that. I think it's going to be more about the therapist, less about the approach. You know, working with somebody who perhaps specializes in working with folks who have ADHD. So what's the secret? It's at the top of the ladder. 
No, no, we haven't had a high dive in the Aquato family circus for years. You know, the curse. You know, the more I think about that curse, <laughs> the more I think it's a lot of Gravolsknook. Gravolsknook. I agree, it's Gravolsknook. is a very poorly constructed ladder. My goodness. Where Nona, what are you doing? Getting out of here. Not me. Nona! Oh no. Circus didn't have a quilting area. I didn't make this. I created that two bit flea circus to make Lucy forget who she was. But it looks like she escaped. Come on, Crowley. Stinky dam is over this way. What? Guess you learn a thing or two when you live with fleas. This is neat. Here's the steamer trunk tag. Gorgeous. What's this? It's Lucy and your father. Oh, this must be one of the first real memories she formed after the astrolabe procedure. Your father was put into an orphanage after his parents were drowned. I locked Maligula away, deep in Lucy's mind to make Lucy herself again. But then I got your father out of that orphanage, buried some of his more uh, traumatic memories, and brought him to her. Why? Well, they were both all alone in the world. The only family the other had left. My sweet little Gussie. Let's keep moving. Wait, wait. Game's not cute, man. This game's not a cute little game. This is just not a cute little game. God. Ford is trying to play God. I mean, at some point, you are stripping people's autonomy away by doing this. I went into your dad's brain and buried some of his traumatic memories? Holy shit, dude.
I don't. I'm not a fan, man. I mean, this the, the whole concept of the Psychonauts is not super great unless you're doing it responsibly, like Raz has been doing for the most part, other than what he did with Forsyth. But Ford, man, I get that it was a time of experimentation, but this is very similar. I mean, it's really tricky because, like, there was a period in psychological research in real life where there was a lot of unethical research that was done. It was part of the gig. I mean, people like the Milgram experiments, for example, the Zimbardo prison experiment. I mean, these are experiments that you likely wouldn't see now. Well, the Milgram experiment, for sure, you wouldn't see. And though they were unethical by that time's stand or by our standards now, and certainly were at that time. They gave us valuable information. That doesn't mean we should repeat them. I don't believe that we should burn the findings, but I also don't believe that they should be repeated. We've gotten more sophisticated with our research. So Ford, in some ways, is a manifestation of that process. It was very crude what people did because they didn't have a good understanding. Anytime we're embarking on some sort of new technology or approach to something, we're going to be crude in the way that we handle it and we're going to be oversimplified and problematic because we have to learn it we have to figure it out and this is not excusing ford's behavior but it is explaining it a little bit like him going in and realizing that the psychonauts had these kind of powers he would go and go "Ooh, look what i can do i can bury trauma here i can do this here i can do that Ooh, look at this i can orchestrate this and make people better but now we have a more nuanced understanding of this going like yikes dude that's not what we should be doing so in some ways we're cleaning up the mess that he made but we got to really learn from this, man. We can't be doing shit like this anymore, brother. You, know, you got to put these things in context. Again, it doesn't excuse it, but it does explain it. I can understand why Ford did some of these things. It doesn't necessarily make it right. And again, that's why I keep saying things like, I don't want Ford to be in charge of this. He's got too much at stake. See how he rationalized it. They were both alone in the world. Right. Like he he definitely rationalized it, but it does not make it right. You know? They were both alone. They needed something. I could help. This is the way that I knew how. But it's like, dude, we gotta we gotta rethink this, man. Now I got, and I will give Ford a little bit of credit. He did admit that he made a mistake, that he that he didn't do everything the proper way. So I mean, in some ways, I think he has acknowledged that he messed up, and maybe that's part of why he got fragmented because he didn't want to sit with the, you know, the realization of some of the stuff that he'd done. So if this is his atonement for it, I, I you know, what am I going to do? Am I going to give him a hard time for it and say, well, you know, screw you, Ford. I'm going to write you off completely because of this, or do we say, all right, dude? A tone, and we'll deal with it later of whether there need to be further consequences to this. But I'd much rather he take an atonement rather than a double down stance on this. I will say that. Just yikes, man.
I don't want what? I want to get. I want to grab these. I want these. This would be a sweet picture if I didn't know everybody was under some sort of astrolabe hypnosis. I never used the astrolabe on the rest of the family. These are real memories Lucy made for herself after I was gone from her life. Good family, excellent balance, very flexible. Not afraid of heights. Not like you, big crawly. Lucy, please! <laughs> That adds an entirely other effed up layer to this. I mean, oh my God. So now she has memories from a time after she was manipulated by Ford when he no longer existed to her. And now she has to ask herself for these. I mean, I guess they're technically her memories, but they're predicated off of a huge move that this guy made. You know, like, oh, I mean, it would make sense because it's like her life continued to go on so she had to build these new memories but these memories are built on a really unsturdy foundation so if we separate her now from this and we say well you're not nona you're actually lucy but you're lucy from when you were from before when you were maligula i mean god I, I mean if you could even get her back to that same exact same state and then you told her everything that happened like how would you respond to that i mean i can't even fathom what that would be like to have somebody tell you that it would be like if you were in a coma and then somebody gave you an entirely new existence and conscientiousness while you were in the coma and then you woke up from the coma and people are like, oh yeah, our, our bad. And you're like, holy shit, but I have all this stuff that I lived out while I was in a coma. Was it even real? I mean, I don't even know how you get we don't even know if we're going to get Lucy back. That's the crazy part about this. Because, like, I don't think it even is as simple as asking Lucy what she thinks. Because what are we going to do? Just erase Nona? Is, this, is that just going to go away? Is she going to have to somehow integrate it? Is there an integration that maybe she's just not conscientious of? Like... On so many levels, this messes within a, with a person's developmental identity like how you develop who you are over time is so contextual and in some ways like linear which it is by nature because time of time being linear like when you disrupt that in this profound of a way i just i i, I can't even anticipate what's going to happen here all i know is that ford now is completely thrown off because he didn't realize that she was going to continue to construct her own mind post what he had constructed. And so now Ford is off balance. And we're all going to be off balance because we don't even know what we're messing with at this point. I don't know if she'll snap. Maybe she will. I mean, we really don't know. But this is super, super, super messed up. I don't even... Like, yeah, pulling back the Lucy memories is messed because... Because, okay... Remember, chat, people don't make decisions unless it makes sense to them to make the decision. So, oh, okay. I'm going to zoom out for this for a second. Because I, I think this is, this is a very important conversation we have to have here at this juncture. The core question that this game is asking right now in this moment is essentially to me... Is it okay to strip a person's autonomous decision-making if that decision-making leads to problems, in this case, harm to others? And while on the surface it might seem like that's a very easy question to answer, to say like, well, yeah, if it's hurting other people, you should be able to strip their autonomy. If I told you if I put this in this perspective, if I told you there is something that you cared about immensely, you developed very strong convictions for values around, and it's something that you really deeply believed in, you constructed an entire worldview around it, and you decided that that's what you wanted to dedicate yourself to, 
Whatever it is. I just, I want you to imagine. Whatever it is, okay? Would you be okay with somebody coming in and essentially telling you and forcing on you saying no? No. Can't have that. It gets into a real gray area. Because if a person is of danger to other people, we do have to control that. We do have to intervene with that. Do we do it by entering their mind and gaslighting them? And I don't use that term lightly and gaslighting them away from the convictions that led them to that point. Or do we seek to understand how a person got to that point and help them understand that maybe the ramifications of that mindset are more harmful than they may think? I'm more in camp for the latter. I mean, this is really wild stuff here that this is asking. At what point is Lucy's autonomy a danger to others? Arguably, it would be when she acts on these things in a way that cause harm but then do is it okay for you to jump into a person's mind and change their mind on something i don't know that the answer to that is yes i think you can hold people accountable to their behaviors you can tell them you know it's like when we say you can be angry you can hold resentment for a person you can't punch them you can't kill them i could sit here and hate somebody all i want if I inflict harm upon that person, all of a sudden I have exerted my autonomy through an improper behavior or a behavior that we have deemed to be problematic. So now we're talking about behavioral modification, but psychonauts are, are affecting the mind. They're essentially focusing on the C part of CBT. So it gets into our values about autonomy because in some ways full-on individuality freedom and autonomy is not something that squares up with human connection and relationship so if because to have pure freedom and autonomy would mean to have absolutely no rules to have no rules it would have to be pure entropy like if you if you if you really take the mind that autonomy is king that freedom of choice to do whatever the hell you want is, then you you rules all of a sudden are completely inconsequential and it's absolute anarchy and it's ridiculous so essentially we create rules as a way to prevent entropy entropy by the way is like the random chaos of the environment like we try to we make rules and stuff for that so in some ways, there are rules that are the that are for the betterment of the entire survivability of the group that do cut into a person's individual autonomy, and that's not always a bad thing. And then we get into various political doctrines that take stances on those things and try to create stuff around that. I'm not going to go into that portion of it, but like, th what is happening here with Lucy and Maligula is fascinating on levels that we could talk about for hours. So I just, you know, this is just kind of a mess of thoughts of where my brain's at while I'm processing what's going on here, because this is, I mean, this is really fascinating stuff. We now essentially have two people in one body where it was synthetically created by an outside force, in this case, Ford. Look how cute the quilts are. Cute little quilt world. Okay, and as we now get into Nona's mind a little bit more here, you know, notice how there weren't really any doubts or anything in what Ford constructed. 
We didn't have these constructs coming up now until we're getting into the Nona's part of this. Got the first tag. Remember, these are doubts. So, what's really interesting... I don't think it's by accident that there are doubts showing up here. Is this Nona doubting her existence because Lucy's breaking through? You know, are we into the, some of the conversations we had in Cyberpunk about a mind meld where it's impossible to tell who's who? You know, where does V start and Johnny end? You know, like... Summer camp? You're the reason I became a psychonaut? No, it is either you or Freezy, but you were such a nerd with those comic books. Hey, True Psychic Tales is a graphic nonfiction periodical. <laughs> Some part of you knew you were living a lie. You sensed Raz's power. You thought he could help you. Oh, I don't know, Crowley. I get so confused sometimes. Usually I was happy, just so intense and stretching the children, telling them to stay away from the water. Then I feel oh, so sad. And just when I was about to figure it out, everything would start to unravel. Uh oh. Uh oh. How much I hate this place. This is it. This is where I locked up Maligula. Behind that dam. We need to unlock it and draw Maligula out into the open. Then we'll combine our powers and direct the astrolabe to blast open a pit into the deepest part of her mind. Why don't we just, you know, blast Maligula? Maligula is a part of Lucy's mind. A primitive part that may have helped her early ancestors survive. We all have our own Maligula, Rasputin. We just know how to keep it locked up down below. No! No! <laughs> no! <laughs> oh, God, no. Oh, poor, no. Holy shit. <laughs> God. You don't bury it! Oh, yes, there are things that are evolutionarily ideal, that are antithetical to existing in the current state of affairs. Yes, that is true. But this is why it's so important for us to understand these things as that, so that we can make better decisions with that information not lock it away because as this is showing locking it away doesn't do anything it doesn't address the problem it doesn't address the effect that it has on a person this is like with emotions this is why i'm so passionate about people not dampening their emotional experience to a point of it not existing anymore because they're there whether you actively attend to them or not. We are all biased. We are all acting in self-interest more often than we like to admit. We are all trying to find ways to connect and exist in the group in such a way that we have more power and resources. We are always acting in a direction that is beneficial to our survival. Always. And that is something that humans need to understand and work with and do better with and make conscientious choices with our prefrontal cortex. It has an ability to manipulate abstract concepts and come up with these things in language or how we articulate them. We need to acknowledge these things, not lock them away. So Ford's entire basis of action here 
is completely off. Denial of these things is not useful. As I've told you all many times, I don't trust anybody who tells me they're unbiased. I don't trust anybody who tells me they're neutral on anything. We always have a stance. We always bring bias to things. And if for no other reason, if we can't really name it, then the bias is survival in a very deep part of our mind. And so to, for, for Ford to blow a pit in this and just keep dropping it in is to deny the reason. He even admitted it himself. He said, this is something in her mind that was evolutionarily adequate at some point in her life. It helped her survive. Well, why wouldn't you leverage that in a time of severe distress? I'm not saying that what Maligula did was okay if she harmed a whole bunch of people, but this is not the way. If you can secure the area while I keep Lucy calm, then we should be able to unlock this dam together. Hmm. It's funny though because I don't know if I don't know if Lucy dislikes this place because it's because of the dam or because of what's behind the dam, right? Like we have no way of knowing. favorite Sorry, but I just can't handle your energy right now. Baggage in here. Just a bit longer. No. No. There must be something causing this bad mood around here. Oh. Great job, Rez. Now, open that locket, and we'll use the astrolathe to blast it. Oh my 
God. All right, I think it's both. From her memory, at least deep down, she remembers the dam breaking and killing so many. She's afraid of whatever is behind the dam will kill others again. That's an interesting interpretation. I like that. I think you, Ford using the word bury is the issue here. Technically, sending it back to a deeper part of her mind is correct, as long as it's reintegrating it back into where it was originally. It was explained a little during a conversation with Ford after entering the cult. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's fine. Just so long as we're not doing, you know, cutting it deeper down and ignoring it and all that stuff. Like, it needs to be worked with and understood, not, you know, cast away. I think I hear some emotional baggage here. Think, Raz? Here we go. What's that sound? And all the baggage is chilling by the dam. It's a locket. It's my sister, Marana. But what? Help me focus the astrolabe, Rasputin, quickly. I think we made many mistakes. But now, we want to face them. I couldn't before. I was young, scared, and alone. But now, I'm only one of those things. Oh, he's grown. Let's hope the astrolabe can make a deep enough pit. Don't worry for it. I'll be right here beside you! <gasps> Got him, Himmel! Jackpot! Bullseye! I felt her! Maligula! I know the identity of the mole! That's incredible, Sasha! Well, I had mechanical assistance, which you didn't need. <clears throat> Agents, we have a security breach in the Green Needle Gulch. She's here. It's okay. You are safe. What happened? We were... You were obviously in distress, so I pulled you out. Is that... her? I told you he was up to something out here with his girlfriend, Maligula. That's not his girlfriend, you little snitch. I'm his girlfriend. Yeah! My god! Oh yeah, funny story. That's not really Nick from the mailroom. I know that, but why? Doesn't matter. I'll take it with me when I take her. What? Truman! Truman!
don't want to toot my own horn or anything. Hey! Lily! Raz! Listen, I've been following my dad for a while, and he's acting really weird. We need to get to the bottom of this. How? Let's get Sasha and Mia to help. But my dad might be gone by the time we get back. I need to see what's going on inside his mind. I need to go in. Into the grand head. You're right. We do. Wait. What? You're not going to make me do this alone, are you? No way, girlfriend. in a bit. <laughs> oh, man. Well, we will enjoy the archives of Truman Zanotto on the next episode. <laughs> Those of you on YouTube watching the VOD, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this one. I hope you enjoyed this. I did. We had a lot of great conversations. What a great way to finish up with Bob. And uh, we've, we've now released the Kraken. Great. We'll see what's going up with Truman on the next one. If you're binging, you can click right over to the next episode. If you're staying with it as they come out, you well, you're going to have to wait a little bit. But I really do appreciate you taking the time. Make sure that you comment down below, like, and subscribe. I'll catch you on the next one.